Right, welcome back to the Davy Brown 990 restoration. Those of you new, my name's Barry. Right, today we're going to take to bits, fingers crossed, the final drive assembly for the right hand side of the tractor. Um, I've only got one home because I've only got room to do one at a time at home. And this will be an amazing learning curve because I've never took one of these to bits before. So, let's crack on. So another little method we use because my gas torch isn't big enough to put enough heat into that collar to get it to expand enough so what I've done is put a barbecue disposable barbecue into the brake drum and we're going to light it for half an hour see how warm we can get it we've got it to move that far not with a puller but with little jacking out bolts and it seems to be coming one side at a time it pops one side then it pops the other side it's not coming straight up so what I need now I need to find I'm going to leave that in there let it get hot or let it stay hot I need to find some longer bolts but that seems to work doesn't it barbecue in the bottom light it let it heat up nice and slowly and gently put the bolts in and you hear it ping when the tension comes off right back in a minute right as you can see it finally gave up the ghost but the thing is the puller didn't work and I think why the puller didn't work was because it wasn't pulling square wasn't pulling straight up it was probably tipping it a little bit um, so we'll put the barbecue into the brake drum, let it. Let it sit for about half an hour to get everything was warm together. I then clear a little spot and I put the grade five UNC, half inch UNC bolts in and tighten them down. I wouldn't say as tight as I could get them, but firm, really firm. And equally as well, which I think is important. Get it equal on either side. I then got an old hair dryer and I blew on the barbecue lump wood, I think it is in there, to heat it up. And during that process, you heard the brake drum go ping. Now, initially you think that's the brake drum cracking with the heat. But then like common sense kicks in and you think, well, you, no, it's not that hot that you're going to crack it. But it's the brig drum expanding and releasing, the tension's releasing. Because as soon as you then get onto the bolts with a couple of sockets, it starts to come up. Um, but they're, I think they're inch and a half, uh, roughly inch and a half. I ran out of space on them. So I ordered yesterday afternoon, ordered three inch stainless steel at them now there were only ones i could find stainless steel so i ordered three inch stainless steel unc bolts now they don't have they're not high tensile right they're just bog standard stainless steel bolts um three inches long the distance that you've got to pull that brake drum up is two and a quarter inches plus the thickness of the base of the brake drum so I had literally ran out of thread on the three inch bolts and I put the puller back in thinking well it's loose now and if it needs to come to here we should be able to whiz it off because when you've got the two jacking out screws in if you put two sockets on with two um, two ratchets you can keep it at the same tension and you can physically see it moving back and forward so you can lift it perpendicular to the shaft so it's not wobbling and then it begins to move fairly freely so we've got it to the last where I just ran out of thread on here and I got a hold of it and tried to lift it off and it still wouldn't come so I put the puller back in but I literally put I had my little two ton jack in 
and I think I literally hit it with one pump on the jack and it came loose and that's now you can see here the collar it doesn't sit on the on the seal surface it sits on a separate raised surface below that now there's a keyway in here let's have a look and see if we can get you in a bit closer right there's a parallel key in here now I had a question the other day from Rob Evans who's managed to get his steering wheel off the steering column he's got a woodruff key in up the top here that he said was stuck so to remove the woodruff keys a lot of people get hammers starting to hammer them in against the shaft hoping that they're going to rotate out I always find it's easier and I, I know I know I hate chisels and I hate hammers but if you get a little chisel come down against the shaft especially with a woodruff key because a woodruff key has got a bevel on it anyway get it there start tapping it the woodruff key will bend away from the shaft yet yeah, you might end up knocking the corner off it or you might end up damaging it but you know what a file in five minutes will put it right or if it's that badly damaged you just replace it what i tend to do or try first of all is set of side cutters come down on top pinch it out just like that not always as easy as that you know what I mean but sometimes it works right another thing while we're here quickly show you this is the breather bolt For the casing it's got a hole cross drilled through the head and down through the shaft to meet that hole so you've got an airway through here this bolt situated it's the top 12 o'clock bolt in the casting um, now I've read this in the manuals and it couldn't John Perry um, Lance and Shane I think it was all messages to say top bull should be the breather right but mine as in John Perry's case was all this was full of shit both ends rusted up and it took a bit of distinguishing between that and a bog standard bolt right it is just a bog standard bolt with a hole drilled in it all right so what had happened with mine was somebody must have had this cover off at some point in their life that bolt was in the eight o'clock position that one was in the 12 o'clock position so did find it the other one the other case and the other cast and i've no doubt would be the same so put it in my drill cleaned the holes out so that's nice and clean there now but it'll get a good way of brushing as I say but there's certain still certain ones of those bolts will need replacing because the heads are all chewed to crap okay so what we're going to do this afternoon I'm going to spend some time with some bits of steel plate and I'm going to make the pressure pads for the other end of that casting so that tomorrow we can get the shaft out get the cover off put the packing pieces in and hopefully jack that bearing out of the shaft out of the casting tomorrow we'll see see how we get on eh? right uh, i'm going to take this to bits today first thing i'm going to do is whip that cover off have a look inside straighten the locking tabs then try and pull the shaft out right let's have the cover off i've got my magnet tray here as i say i had this off the other day jesus i don't think i'm putting them back on that tight i know i'm putting them on to stop oil leaks didn't realize i'd put them on that tight 
Right, under my cloth here, I've got, for two reasons, I've got an old tablecloth, which is going to stop any oil that leaks out of here from getting onto the me bricks in the back garden. Keeps me wife happy. Keeps me happy because I haven't got to clean the mess up. So we'll get this off. We'll straighten the tabs on the lock and washers and we loosen the retaining nut. Thinking back what I should have done it was about a month ago I should have stood this up on some frames in my storage shed across on the farm and the condensation in there okay so what I've got to do I've got to get in here lift these tabs up from here so we can straighten this what we've got to do straighten this tab I don't know if we've got to straighten those ones but that locking washer looks like it's double skinned can you see there Looks like it's two tab washers together. Never mind, we'll find out, won't we? Right, let's get in there, see if we can get these tabs lifted. Oh, there's Betty kicking about. Hello, Betty, darling. Oh, I think we can get in with a little I want. There we go. Now, these bearings and everything in here feel pretty good. That's little bit of backlash on that but they feel pretty good got a brass punch somewhere see if we can get in with that Right, one, only one, keeping that on, right, okay, let's have a look and see if we can loosen the nut, Ah, uh, no, I can see why that looked as though it was um, two washers because that looked like it was two because of that surface there. Yep, that's nice and free now. Right, let's have that nut off. Because we're supposed to wind this nut off. A bit dark in there, isn't it?
Right, that's off. Let's get this tipped up. Let's get set up for in here. Back in a minute. Yesterday, made some packing pieces with the radius cut out. This fits in there to stop the seal carrier lifting. You see that's still bolted down fairly tight, well tight. Um, what we need to do That's slipped already. It has, isn't it? That's not going to take much of getting out, is it? Hopefully. We need to go in through these holes. I've already moved, removed this bolt from here because we've got to get in to shape that packing piece. But I need to go in through the bottom one, remove the bolt so that I can get the packing piece in and it'll lie flat on that seal carrier. Right, let's get at it. Let's get the next one out. These aren't particularly tight, which leads you to believe has somebody already been in here? Right, we'll take that bolt out, look. Let's have this one out. With a bit of luck, this should come straight out. So we'll position, we're jacking out opposite where we've took the bolts out we'll pop our packing pieces in and we'll put our bolt in right let's have a look now make sure that It's a bit black in there, but you can see that's on both plates. Let's see. I'm starting. Jack these out there. Eh? Put a bit of superior bulk on this, eh? Just come on. The beauty of doing it this way is you can actually feel when you've got inequality between the bolts. I think that's we're done. But I think we've got to keep pushing for the simple reason. I think we need to push that in our bearing off. Yes, we're 
pushing that in a bearing. The inner taper, the inner roller in here, pushing that out of place. Because it's got to obviously come off the end of the shaft, hasn't it? Now, if you make these packing pieces properly and you have the right width and you put the dimple in, you're not going to get as much trouble as this where the packing piece is dropping out. Right, bearings off. Ah, let's, let's move these a little bit. Bearings off inside. Let's see if this will come. Right, so wipe me hands on me trousers. So in here we've got a packing piece, we've got a bull gear, we've got the inner race of that taper bearing and then we've got the inner race of the taper bearing on the other side. Now let us see if we can get some pieces took out carefully. Bearings. I think that's gonna have to wait. Is it? Yes. The packing piece is gonna have to wait. You know when you just put things in the wrong place all the time. Let's pop. Pull gear out. Now we can get our packing piece out, which goes on that side. There's what other bearing. Pop that beside its little brother. We have got the nut. Where's me lock and washer? Is it on the edge of here? Oh God! That's why you don't put there. It is. Tell you what, we'll leave that on there, and then we'll know what sides what, won't we? For the minute. I believe that's the spur shaft drive in there. Other than that, we've got the race to come out of there. Now I believe that that is, no there's not, I think it's this one, there's a circlip in the back of there between the seal. Hello Betty. Hello. Come on then. Come on, we've got some worms up here for you. Are you coming? Right, let's get tidied up. I'll tell you what, wait a minute, let's have this off. While we're here, while we're here, let's face it, we've got nothing else to do, have we? Huh? Hey, me darling, I hear you. Where are you? Come on, are you come and get some worms. got some nasty crudds in it, hasn't it? But there's a shield, little brass shield there. There's a big o-ring. There's a... I think that's, that should be shims, shouldn't it? It is, there. Shims. Oh, 
one, two, one, two, three. Oh, it's three. Three either side. Right. So we'll keep them in the pairs like that because they go back in like that. We've got my old o-ring that's going to need a new replacement. We've got our brass, whatever that is, skirt, seal, whatever. You can tell I've had one of these two bits before, can't you? Huh? I've got a clue what things are. Right. So, let's just leave that there for a minute. So that leaves with an outer race in here. And an outer race in the back of there and my well, shaft so next job let's have the shaft out of here let's get you repositioned right we've got a circlip in here that needs to come out this cover apparently comes out when you bump the shaft pop the circlip out bump the shaft that shaft should come out now on the book i am convinced it shows you in here, behind this seal, is a circlip. And I don't know whether that circlip's got to come out first or last. But we're going to start by getting this one out of here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this circlip a couple of taps with my brass punch. Judging by the state of this circlip, I think we're going to need a new one. Okay, circlip pliers. Screwdriver. The last couple of days, I have given this a soaking with WD-40. Now is just to snap off in the bloody house, isn't it? As I thought that well rusted in, isn't it? Well rusted in. I haven't got any gas left. Right, now.
You can see the rust popping out of that when you hit it. Right, right. we're going to leave this video there, I'm going to get it out to you guys so you can see what we've done. I'm not going to mess on with that sir clip till I've got some heat. Um, as I say, I've got a gas cylinder on order, I'm waiting for it to come, it should come by the weekend I'm hoping. Um, what I do want to do is snap that in that position. I'm going to wait, I'm going to get a bit of heat on it. We'll try and bump that shaft out from the side. Um, if I get a video of that, that one, then I'll pop it up separately. If not, I'll video taking the second one to bits and show you that. But there's only the circlip to come out, apparently. You bump the end of that drive shaft and it knocks the cover off and it comes out the outside edge of it. So, I was quite pleasantly surprised actually with that, but we'll give all the bits, um, we'll give all the bits a real good clean up now, a good bath, we'll have a look at them, inspect them, see what can be saved, see what cannot be saved, what we need to replace. I know we're going to need seals, not that my seals were leaking, but when you're in here, you far better put the seals in, and it just saves you doing a revisit, doesn't it, which is this. It's quite a big job to be doing a revisit on if it's in the tractor, especially if it's that inside seal off the uh, the input shaft, which I believe is the spur shaft, isn't it? I've been calling that output shaft a spur shaft, but it's not. That's that's the final drive shaft, apparently. So, right, guys, I know it's took a while, but I've had to wait for the weather. I've had to wait for tools coming to do that. Well, that's more important because, I mean, we either got this done this morning, which is, what's today, a Thursday morning. We either got it done this morning or tomorrow, Friday, 6 o'clock, we're forecast for 60, 70 mile an hour winds. So it's quite obvious it wasn't going to get done tomorrow. And then I think we're in for a bit of rain after that. However, right guys, thank you very much for visiting. I hope you found it useful. If you have... Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more of me pulling me tracked at the bits and putting them back together. And as always, we really do appreciate your time when you come visiting us to see what we're doing. Any hints, tips, advice is greatly received. Pop them in the comments below, not a problem. I love it when people get in touch and give us good advice and pointers and the benefit of their experiences. It's wonderful. Plus, when you do that, people reading the comments, like John Perry, John Perry loves to sit and read all the comments, don't you, John? But people like that can read your comments, read your help and advice, and it helps others out as well. It doesn't just help me out. There's Betty shooting for her back garden back. So, right, time to wrap this up. So, as I say, thank you very much for visiting, but remember, don't overthink it. It's only nuts and bolts. Catch you in the next one. Bye now.